Welcome back to our Sunday Live. If this is your first time tuning in, my name's Lee. This is our Coombe Valley Campers live Q&A on a Sunday. Okay, that right now. Um, and I am here to answer your questions regarding camper van conversion. Um, maybe you've got questions about the business. Uh, maybe the video we've just put up today, actually. Um, the last video went up today for Dan's van. I know a lot of people out there have been waiting for this video to go live, and it's actually gone live today. It went live today at 6 p.m. So if you're here now and you've uh, actually seen it, give us a good thumbs up right there. Already we've got some people tuning in and watching. We have got Alex, well, Motivate, he's the first to comment there, bang on eight o'clock. He says, why, hello there, good sir. Good evening, Goggy. Um, Alex says, sup. David Bailey says, hi, everyone. And Carl Fishing says, hi, good evening. Thank you very much for tuning in. It's very, very good to see you all already. And we've already got 15 people tuned in and four thumbs up and we're only a minute and a half in. So wonderful. Thank you everybody for tuning in. And how has everybody's weeks been? Uh, I haven't seen you lot for seven days and man, we've had a lot go on, especially our end um, at the workshop. Um, we have had some new wheels arrive for Project 2 kt 5 That is super exciting. And if you watch or follow our social media, you would have seen those. Um, we had our new ramp delivered and fitted on Tuesday this week. That was really cool. That was great fun. It's a new um, twin bush 4.2 ton two poster ramp um, or hoist or lift or whatever you want to call it. And it's super, it's super wide, it's super tall. It's actually got a maximum elevation of 1.9 meters. So even our tallest of guys um, can get completely under a vehicle. Um, Ross has just chirped, chi bleh, chimed in and says, don't forget the transmission jack. Yes, Twin Bush, who supplied the ramp, also chucked in a transmission jack as well. So yeah, 500 kilo transmission jack or something ridiculous. Absolutely wonderful stuff. What else have we done this week? And we had some amazing um, prototype windows for the 2K T5 as well, but more of those another day. Um, so yeah, very, very exciting week, very busy week. Um, some good work going on. Gosh, yeah, it has been a busy week. And then I finished up my week yesterday in terms of work, working on the splitty. If you have seen some of our stories um, at the weekends, I didn't actually upload any. I am doing some work at the weekends um, for a customer who has a 21 window, 1964 21 window right hand drive Sambo with a full length sunroof. And I've been tasked to fit all of the headlining, which has been an absolute mammoth task. So I'll put some photos um, on the socials next week for that. Um, back to the comments, we've got Maximus and Coasters. Good evening, Lee and Chit Chat. Hope you're all having an awesome evening. R1H1, Ross has given us a thumbs up. James says, evening, Lee. We've been two. I can't see the rest of your comment. Oh, there we go. It's down down there. Uh, Maximus has said, oh, new wheels. Uh, Ross is saying, don't forget the transmission jack. Carl Fishing says, I'm okay, but I'm just worried about the clean air zone. In the middle of a build and don't know what to do. Divulge for me, Carl. Let me know what your problems are or what you're thinking about your problems are, my man. Alex says, I want a ramp. <laughs> James says, we've been to the caravan and camping show today. It's a shame there wasn't more self-build stuff there. Well, maybe next year we can change that. What do you reckon? Um, we were, as a team, planning to go down to the NEC um, in the last week. I really wanted to make it like a team outing so we could all go down there together, get some really good inspiration, see some of our uh, fellow businesses who are down there. So I believe the guys from Van Shades were down there. I believe... Um, some other of our traders friends were down there as well so it would have been good to see them but mainly it was for some well we would have gone for some inspiration really see what people are building see what new products are on offer because you always, always get some exclusives so yeah it was, would have been a good one would have been a good one so yeah i'm i'm looking forward to learning more i might even watch some youtube videos 
um, to see people's reviews of the show. Whoops, sorry, moving my moving my phone about here. Roy Stewart says, good evening to you all. S. King says, yo, Lee. Alex says, I started up my classic Mini for the first time in three years. It leaks oil more than my van. Mate, I'd love to see pictures of the Mini. Well, me and a friend of mine were discussing Minis today and, uh, and other classics and how much everything's just gone up in value. Like Beatles and Minis and 2CVs all used to be cheap throwaway cars 20 years ago and now everything's ramped right up. Um, Carl Fishing says, I have an 08 Vito and in Manchester, the clean air zone and the clean air zone will do after review and I feel my work has no value now. Ah, right. So Manchester have effectively, or what's coming into play is effectively a ULEZ zone. Um, and we've had a lot of discussions about these actually. So <sighs> it's a difficult one, actually, the clean air zones. And I'm going to guess by your comments, um, what was your name? Sorry, Carl. Um, that you're actually within the clean air zone. Now, I don't know how often you'll be using the camper van in the clean air zone. Um, you'll be using your camper van outside of the clean air zone for the most part, but I guess, I don't know, do you get some sort of, um, sorry, Ronnie's just come by to say hello. Who wants to see Ronnie? You can say hello, Ron. Up here. Um, Yes, I don't know whether as a resident within the ULEZ zone, do you get any form of, um, I don't know, do you get some sort of compensation or do you get X amount of cars that are allowed um, to be within the ULEZ? I don't know, you'll have to divulge a bit more information so I can so I can learn about it a bit more as well. Um, who else we got going on? Uh, the MZ12, that's M, good evening. Yes, I went to, and G's on as well. So um, actually, myself and my family, we met up with M and G today. We've had a wonderful walk down at Buell Water, which is a, a beautiful sort of, blah, if I can speak, a reservoir location down near us. It was lovely just to get out today, go for a nice walk, despite the fact we, I think we had all, we we're out for about an hour and a half, two hours, and we had, I think, all weather in about an hour. <laughs> We had sun, wind, rain, and even snow today on our walk, which is quite funny. But yeah, wonderful, wonderful morning and afternoon. It was fantastic. So thank you, M&G. It was a lovely, lovely day. Uh, where are we? Um, somebody's going, hound. Alex says, hound. Yes. And G says, evening all, including Big Ron. Yeah, look, he's staring at me now. What do you want, dog? No. I've obviously upset him. Um, David Bailey says, Sunday notes are so much better now tuning into you guys. Gone are the days of being forced into watching Songs of Praise and Antiques Roadshow on a Sunday night many moons ago. Well, I'm glad we can be of some sort of entertainment for you as well. But we're also here to ask questions too. So if you've got any questions regarding your build, or like I said right at the beginning, if you've got any questions about your build, uh, us as a company, maybe Dan's video if you've watched it. The last and final episode um, of Dan's van went out today at 6pm, so that was a goodie. Hey, talking of questions, Alex has tuned in and said, do you use the Dodo Thermoliner Pro on the insides of your doors as well as the sound deadening? Yes, we do. So... If it's the load area, certainly. And we also use the third layer, which is the thermo fleece. Um, and in cab doors, we sell a cab upgrade and that is extra um, sound deadening and van liner to use on the inside of your cab doors and then the ceiling as well. And you put, can put sound, just sound deadening on your cab floor under your cab mat. Um, but before you go getting anything, maybe hold out because um, on the 2K T5 build, we've got some pretty exciting stuff coming from Dodo Mat. Dodo Mat are releasing some new products. They want us to feature it. They want us to help, not launch it, that's the wrong word, showcase it. They want us to showcase it this, um, this year. So we've got some really cool exclusive products coming on the 2K T5. But to answer your question, yes, thermo liner on the doors. Betsy70 says, um, hi Lee, good evening. Um, Carl has come back and said nothing apparently but compensation towards a new van. Interesting. But yes, obviously, if you spent all this time and money converting an 08 Vito, it's it's a hard one. Um, 
It's Stu, by the way. Stu King. Oh, Stu. Stu. Good evening, Stu. Um, nothing apparently but compensation towards a new van. So, yes, obviously you've put lots of time and money and effort into building a van out of an 08 Vito. Will you get that money back? Will you get compensation? I guess there is a kind of benefit at the moment that as we're ramping up towards the summer, um, the value of camper vans are going up. If you do fancy or if one of the options is to sell your van to somebody who's maybe outside of the ULEZ. It's going to be a really difficult one. And I'm sorry, you know, that's a pretty crappy position to be in, man. Um, 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 um. Betsy says, pop top roof question. Go ahead. Is it common to get a slight lift and noise in the roof when passing the wake of a big lorry? Do my straps need to be upgraded? Um, what van and what roof do you have, Betsy? Um, to answer your question in general, no. Um, your roof might need adjusting. We actually had a customer come by or a prospective customer come by this week um, because they've had their van maybe three, four, five years. And, oh, T5 Rymo roof. Okay, so yes, they can go on the wonk. Either the brackets, like the big scissor hinges at the back, they can shift back and forward, or one of the um, hydraulic struts can collapse, or at least fail prematurely, or be worn out. Um, so as you close your roof, say if this is the flat metal roof of your van, the, the pop-top roof should obviously come down and sit even. It shouldn't sit one side or the other. Um, but the one we saw the other day, the roof was almost all over like this. So that's the front of the van. The roof was down and it was almost all the way over like that. So we've got to um, not remove the roof completely. We've certainly got to do some fine tuning and maybe some strut replacement as well. So um, yes, that might be a potential or your straps might need replacing. Or if when the roof is closed fully, you have like an eyelet at the top where your strap goes round, and then you have an eyelet at the bottom, which you tighten your strap into. They might be too close together. Um, so you've got your pop top and the metal roof. They might, those straps might, or the eyelets might be too close together, which means you don't have a lot of pull down force on those straps anymore. So that might need, one of those might need to be relocated further apart from each other so you can get more tension on the strap as well. Um, Maybe if you um, want a further explanation, potentially send us some photos to coombevalleycampers.co.uk. We can take a look and see if we can offer some more advice there. Sadly, we can't share photos here, which is slightly annoying, but I guess it would get quite busy. Um, yeah, so, yeah, going on from what we were talking about earlier, very busy week. Um, we have new wheels that are in, which are, and if you're, if you have a look at our social media, you can spy those. Um, the new lift went in today and we had a big sort out of the workshop. So we moved our other lift. Um, so I can have now a filming area um, for the projects we've got coming in. And what else have we had this week? Yeah, the windows, the prototype windows, prototype double glaze windows for a T5. They are awesome too. So yeah, look out for those. And what else is going on? Gosh, so much has gone on this week. But yeah, really, really fantastic. And what about you guys? Have yeah, the weather's been nice-ish uh, over the weekend. Have any of you been working on your van? Um, have you been out in the van, taking it nice, somewhere nice, just down a beach for fish and chips maybe, or even out for a weekend camping? What have you been up to this weekend? Leave it down in the comments. I love to read out all of your bits and pieces as well. Um, Carl has come back and he said, it's not public yet. And after chatting to a customer of mine who's dealing with it, Clean Air Zone, cash offer to a new van. Yes, I could sell it, but apparently they will roll it uh, UK stage by stage. Compensation towards a gas conversion should be an option to save classic build. You are right. Um, and the ULEZ can be seen as a bonus, but to a lot of people it can be seen as a hindrance for sure. Um it's a difficult one. It's 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 hit traders really, really hard as well. Those people who uh, are traveling in and out of city centers every day, say if you've just bought a new van with a Euro 5 compliant engine and then overnight, oh, okay, it's Euro 6 and above that you now have to 
own to be able to get into the city every day without charging you 15 quid, um, then you've got to get yet another new van. So it is, is, it is very, very difficult. Um, but in terms of camper vans, I don't know. Maybe there is an option for you to store your van somewhere outside of the ULEZ zone. You might have a caravan storage place, or I know it would cost a bit of a premium, but to have your van in dry storage, not only is that has the benefit of being somewhere dry and secure and ready for you to use it next, but it will also keep the van in a good condition for longer. Yes, so it's a, it's, it's a real difficult one. And I, 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 I feel sorry for you, my man. I really, really do. Um, yeah, so um, like I said, if you're watching, let us know what you've been up to. Have you been playing with your van? Um, what have we got going on this week at the workshop? If I, if you think I'm mumbling, I, I'm trying not to. I do apologise. Basically, what I'm trying to do, if there's any quiet spots in people asking questions or whatever, I normally like to fill in in between those gaps. So just trying to think what we've got going on in the workshop. Our Airstream project, the large Airstream project, that's nearing completion at the moment. Sam is getting very busy on doing the wiring, which is awesome. Um, so we've got 12 volt installation going in, um, the gas is going in as well, and then that'll all be signed off. Uh, water is going in and the kitchen, sorry, and the bathroom considerations are being sorted as well. But we've got lots of new projects coming in as well. Um, our long term T5 project, sorry, T25 project, that's coming to a close as well. And what's better than anything is I'm now able to spend more time down in the workshop. The team upstairs in the office, that's Marcus and my wife, Domi, they're doing great, great work upstairs and relieving a lot of pressure off me, which means I can now spend more time in the workshop working on your vans. So, yes, really, really good stuff there. Uh, Karen is here and says, uh, I'm looking to get myself a van. Unsure of what one, but ideally a long wheelbase and auto. Auto everything I see is mega money. Uh, do you know what it is? Um, in terms of prices for vans and everything else, there is still a bit of a premium in terms of van, especially getting a van that's your ideal spec and with low mileage as well. Excuse me. Are you looking specifically for a Volkswagen? I know obviously Volkswagen do a T5 slash T6 in a long wheelbase with a auto slash seller speed whatever they call it, seller speed. That's old school Alfa Romeo talk. Tiptronic. Um, I'm sure the Transit Custom might do one as well. Um, what's your sort of requirements? Obviously, you've said long wheelbase and auto, but what other requirements do you have when it comes to your van? Let me know, or your prospective van. Carl Fishing says, the van is kitted out for video and production too. Oh, that's a shame, man. That is a shame. Uh, Alex says, did some more sound deadening while spraying the Mini's engine bay with Silip Bang and waiting for it to dry in the sun. Nice one. Yes, we need pictures. Throw it on our in or throw it on your Instagram, Alex, if you're on, our, on if you're on Instagram, and then tag us so we can all. Because if you t if you tag us, and this goes for everybody, if you do a picture of your van and you or whatever you've got, and you tag Coon Valley Campers, we always share those pictures on our Instagram. Um, Betsy has said. Uh, heading to Norway in the van in May, thinking I might add a midge-proof sliding door screen. They are available. If you have a look at the guys at Campervan Culture, that's Jed at Campervan Culture, um, they may well have a midge slash mosquito um, screen for your door. Take a look at those. I've The most recent one I've seen was on a Mercedes Sprinter. Fantastic, fantastic thing. Um, really easy to install and very, very effective. Roy has said, opted to watch my football team lose and rugby team lose today instead of starting to sound dead my van. Oh, no. Lesson learned. Great weather up here in Scotland. Sound deadening tomorrow. Whereabouts in Scotland are you, Roy? We love Scotland. As a family, we absolutely love Scotland. Um, Karen says, I use a wheelchair, so I need space to accommodate it. OK, well, that might make the budget go up a bit more because it's obviously quite specific is it wheelchair usage so you need to have the wheelchair in the driver's position it's i, I don't know much about wheelchair or disability uh conversions etc etc um i don't know is 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 there some sort of uh, what's the word i'm looking for 
do you not get an option in terms of mobility? I'm sure there's mobility schemes that help you with vehicles. Again, I'm, I'm pretty naive to it all. So, um, oh, Karen says no, just outside the van. Okay, so it's quite a quite a requirement. Um, I mean, we can look into it for you, Karen, if you like. Um, it's very, again, it's not something I'm fully tuned into. We haven't had a lot of dealings with uh, disability vehicles. Um, but if you are after something more specific, I know people who can help. So please feel free to send us an email. But I'm sure um, you, at this stage, you might have a better idea of companies to turn to in terms of mobility vehicles. So, um, oh, not on campus. Oh, it's a no on campus via mobility, lol. Yeah, I guess so. I guess that's more of a pleasure vehicle than an A to B commuter vehicle, isn't it? Hmm, interesting. So are you converting it, Karen? Are you converting it or do you need a camper van ready for conversion? Gosh, that is quite a difficult one. I can, uh, Joe, you know the brain in my head right now is trying to think of interior designs and possibilities for camper conversions for uh, people with a disability, wheelchair storage, that sort of stuff. It's all going on in my head right now. Maybe we need another chat another day, Karen. Maybe ping us an email. Uh, Taxi driver says, good evening all from Mad Mossy and Bath. Good evening, man. He tunes in every week. It's lovely to see you. Right. Um, who's part of Team 333? Give us a little nod down below. If you're part of Team 333, let us know. 89, Thunder Chunky says, Alex, which mini do you have? Yes, Alex, which mini have you got going on? Roy Stewart says, Greenock. Is that how I say it? Is that how I would say it? Greenock? Gateway to the Highlands? I'm sure I'd get absolutely ruined if I said Greenock, but I might be wrong. Um, Alex says, at Thunder Chunky, a 93 1.3 L SPI. Oh, so it's a later Mini. Excellent. Uh, Karen says, no, I'm too old to self-convert. And Alex has come back to Thunder... Or Thunder Chunky has come back to Alex and says, I have an 05 new Mini. Silver Fox Builds, he has joined the chat. Good evening, my man. He says, evening all, Coombe Valley crew. Just walked in from the cold building the van's new ceiling framework at 333 with a winky smiley. Is it Greenock? Yeah, it's not Greenock. It's Greenock, right? Um, uh, again, once again, if you haven't seen any of Silver Fox Build's Instagram, do you have a... Oh, it is Greenock, not Greenock. Okay. Okay, I apologise. Again, I thought I'd get ruined either way. Um, yeah, going back to Silver Fox Build's Silver Fox Builds, do you have a, a, a YouTube? I can't quite remember. I know you're obviously on YouTube right now. Maybe I'm just being a bit naive again, but uh, certainly check out his Instagram. It's absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Greenock, not Greenock. Okay. Gateway to the Highlands. Well, maybe it's somewhere we should check out for sure. <laughs> Roy says accepted. Apology accepted. Okay, so no, Silver Fox Builds doesn't have a YouTube channel. But yes, go and check out the progress on his long wheelbase, high top. Is it L3H3? Um, Transit. It's amazing. Very, very cool. He's very fastidious in his work. He's buying the best gear and it's absolutely fantastic. Um, Gary Richmond says, Hi Lee, are you still selling, selling the handbrake lowering kits? We are no longer selling the handbrake lowering kits. Sadly... Um, because we used to make the handbrake kits in batches. Um, we don't have the benefit of huge funding or big companies helping supply us. So basically we can't compete. Um, the nearest possible person, uh, we can't compete in terms of price. So the nearest possible person or the near, or the closest to the handbrake brackets we used to sell are now sold by just campers i hate to give the trade to somebody else but that's life um but yes just campers sell a very very similar handbrake kit to the ones we used to sell to excuse me but we do still sell the handbrake gators and we are the only people out there to sell the handbrake gators uh alex says t25 swivel seats do bases exist that slide then swivel not swivel, then slide, bolted to the base. I want full access to the passenger battery box without having to cut the lid in half. 
Yeah, isn't that a pain? Um, no. Unless you were to make something really clever, almost flip the swivel bases that you can buy. I believe unless you were to... Whether you've got two options, you can buy aftermarket swivel bases from the likes of Just Campers. Um, second nod to Just Campers tonight. You can buy aftermarket swivel bases from Just Campers, or you can hold out and scour the ads for a genuine Westphalia swivel base. Um, and they were the ones that were mounted in the box, but gave you still the ability to remove your battery out of it. And they are better. Um, they are better because they make the seat sit lower. So with a swivel base, and it goes for most vans, you obviously belt a swivel place in between the seat base and the seat, and it increases the height, whereas the Westphalia ones actually increase it. Sorry, they increase it by a minimal amount. They increase it by a minimal amount, yes. Um, Betsy 70. What have you said there, Betsy? Sorry, I'm, I'm scrolling through the comments. If people are thinking why I'm quiet... Um, watch out for those darned low roofs, Lee. Oh, are you seeing the the mark on my head? <laughs> yeah, not a good look. Uh, twice I banged it this week. Once on the roof of a... No, yeah, once on the roof of a splitty and through a roller shutter door. That's why I always wear a hat for the most part. Um, 89 Thunder Chunky Mini Cooper R50 and a T2 Late Bay Auto that's for sale. Thinking about Karen, but might, but might not be in the budget. Oh, yeah, but they've Karen said it needs to be a long wheelbase um, in terms of an auto camper. But nice shout, by the way. Motivate says, hey, oh, recently in Germany, there's been a crazy surge on camper van thefts, especially with the keys where you start the vehicle with a push button thing. Thieves are using a fancy computer too. Yes. Um, well, I, I wasn't aware of that. But uh, remote starting on higher-end vehicles, and I guess modern vehicles and modern camper vans with push starts will probably suffer from this as well. So modern thieves are using a transmitter relay. So they will sit near your house somewhere, they will scan your property or neighbouring properties for the signal that your car key emits, because it's always your car key, if you've got a modern car, is always emitting a signal. Um, and what they will do, they will use a relay transmitter to pick up or receive a transmitter. They will pick up on that signal and then they will amplify that signal to the car so your key might be at the back of the house but they will be near you pick up on that signal and then amplify it so the van or the vehicle thinks that your key is next to it or within a range that you can operate the push button and then they go ahead and push button start the van because once they're started you can just drive them away um so there are things you can do there are things you can do to prevent thefts obviously the biggest thing if you were trying to not prevent theft but i think one of the best things you can do for your vehicle of value is install a tracker one that is permanently assessed or tracked um, by a third party company sorry i'm wiping my eyes a lot at the moment um so yeah a little tracker people are using things like um what are the i iphone discs things that's something you can do but a tracker is one of the best things you can do because if someone wants to take your vehicle they're going to take it um but if you can keep track of that vehicle when it has been taking that's the best bet of actually retrieving it um if you don't have that sort of budget or option what you can do is fit these um big safe t-locks they're called um and they clamp round your accelerator clutch and brake pedal and you need a big key. So they clamp round it so you can't put the clutch or brake or accelerator pedals up or down. Um, so that's a really, really good deterrent. Um, steering locks, I know old school, but they're deterrents. 
gear link, uh, gear lever locks. Again, old school, but a deterrent. So yes, there's lots of things you can do, but I would suggest one of the best things you can do for your vehicle, if you're worried about it being taken, is fitting a tracker and getting that professionally installed. We are looking into that option um, for the T 2K T5 build. And when we do, we will cover that with you on the videos. So yeah, people have been responding. S, uh, S King says there's also increase in thefts for high value transporters in the UK. Absolutely. Motivate, cloning the infrared signal. There you go. And then pop it into your car. I've been looking into security like steering locks and bear locks, even tracking devices like Apple AirTags. That was the word that I was thinking and smart AirTag thing. S King, along with transits, that's always been an issue. Absolutely. Ems has come in and said, hide a little, had a little, blah, 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 my gosh, hide a little tile tracker in the bus so at least you can find it again. Absolutely. Em. Roy has said, oh, we're on something new. Bear with us one second, Roy. Roy, would you have a suggestion on the best location for my leisure batteries, two, in a transit custom short wheelbase? Initially planned under the passenger double seat, but I'm now intended to fit a swivel double seat. Um, you can effectively put the uh, leisure batteries anywhere in your van. If you are planning a, I would call a regular camper van conversion, so there's a long side interior um, on one side and then a rock and roll bed, uh, lots of people tuck their batteries near the rear wheel arch, near the back of the interior. That's a good slot to put them um, under the rock and roll bed. That's another good option as well, because the wiring can be modified or extended to reach where you need a battery. So you can literally put your leisure batteries anywhere. Um, back to the units, like I say, is quite popular. Um, 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 um. Where are we? Where are we? Carl has said, this is true, and BMW had a few stolen for the factory in the Midlands a few years ago. That's really interesting. Uh, Carl says, I used to work for both the AA and RAC. They just drag it onto a low loader if they want it. Yeah, exactly. If somebody wants to steal your car, they're going to steal it no matter what. So like I say, a tracker is probably one of the best things you can do for your vehicle. Uh, motivate, also a good deterrent, is if you have a swivel seat, keep them in the rotated position. Yeah, um, and in, again... Like your man said, if they want to take it, they'll take it. They'll low loader it, they'll lift it, they'll drag it away, whatever they want. If they want to take it, they will find a way, especially if it's a, a very high value um, item. Um, with older cars, what I know a lot of people do is they'll swap plug wires out um, on the engine or they'll disconnect a, a wire from the coil so it's not easy to spot, things like that. So a lot of people would do a couple of very easy um, deterrents such as a kill switch in the car and stuff like that. But yes, obviously more modern vehicles come with more modern problems, things like cloning keys, relays, etc., etc. But as said, if they want to take it, they'll take it. So trackers are a good shout. Um, we're very lucky to have, oh, here we go. Uh, S King, he says, a well-known camper conversion in the West Country had eight transporters stolen three weeks ago. Now there's an insurance bill or an insurance claim. G has come in and says, saw several new Range Rovers in London the other day, all using the big yellow stop locks on the steering wheels, because that's be better than the factory security on a 100k car. That's horrendous. But I guess if it works, it works. This is a very interesting chit chat going on, people. Absolutely. Taxi drivers come in and said, these keyless vehicles, how does the steering lock work? Normal vehicle steering locks operate as soon as you remove the ignition key. So there you go. Um, maybe that's why because you're not putting a key in, there is no steering lock on that. Do you know what? My wife's BMW doesn't have a key. It's a, it's a push button. And I've never actually checked if it has a steering lock. So maybe that's something I'll check. But I'm going to guess it's either going to be an electrically operated steering lock or, um, I don't know, or it doesn't have one at all. Maybe somebody who's a little more educated than me in this field will be able to tell me. Um... S. King says, physical deterrent is always a good option. Yes, absolutely. Carl says, placing an old iPhone cabled into the roof lining. Good shout. Yeah, do track my phone. Uh, 89 Thunder Chunky says, looking at T4s because of Dan's build. What's the best engine? Um, I'm also a Dan as well, says Thunder Chunky. Um, if you're going for a T4, a good, strong 2.5 litre, five cylinder engine is an excellent option excellent excellent option they pull to the moon if you look after them um they go really well they can be tuned quite well as well um but if you're looking well they, they came with loads of options the t4s 
Um, the 1.9 TD is a really good old thumper, and I'll just keep going for 400, 500,000 miles. The T5, sorry, the 2.5 five cylinder, that's a very, very good, is that right? It's a five cylinder? Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Um, that's a very good option as well. They sound great. Again, they're quite um, accommodating to a little tune as well. You can do um, injector changes, turbo changes, that sort of stuff. So the 2.5 is a very, very good one. Um, so as with anything, buy the best you can afford, look for good mileage, look for good body work um, with T4s especially because they can go all freely around the wheel arches, um, inner arches go as well, and the rear arches, um, underneath the rear arches and the rear suspension mounting points, they go as well. So um, definitely with a T4, buy the best you can afford, um, but try and find one that's not been pugged up or dicked around with too much for sure. Gosh, I've just looked at the time. We are 36 minutes in already. This is remarkable. Thank you, everybody. You are keeping me busy tonight. There's 36 people tuned in and 15 thumbs up, which is good. If anybody... Right, I'm going to do a quick segue. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, like I say, we're about halfway now, but thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't given this little video a thumbs up already, please go ahead. It really, really helps us as a channel. Um, really helps this as a video and also all of you commenting as well makes it fantastic for growing the channel so 34 of you in here so far if you would be kind enough if you've enjoyed what we've done here tonight so far we've learned anything um, from the comments and the questions so yes please if you wouldn't mind a lovely little thumbs up would be fantastic and that goes for the whole channel um, I'll divulge a little bit in the channel um, obviously if you're on YouTube and you're on YouTube right now um, you might watch a lot of YouTube channels as I do. I watch almost all YouTube content. I don't watch a lot of TV. Um, it really helps those channels. If you watch that video, even for two minutes, but you do enjoy it, give it, give the video a thumbs up and give those people a subscribe as well because it really, really does help these content creators um, and helps them make new content. And for you, it helps keep you updated as to when they're uploading the new videos. So... There we go. My little run over and my thanks to you as well. If you have gone ahead and given this video a thumbs up, I really do appreciate it. Back to the show. Uh, Roy Stewart says any physical deterrent will move the thief onto another van without one. There we go. Wise words. Taxi driver. I thought the steering lock has to work as part of the annual MO, bleh, annual MOT requirements. Um, any MOT testers in the house can maybe um, tell us otherwise. Ems has said the start stop button has to be pressed with the key before it can be unlocked on mine anyway. OK, interesting. Um, Carl has come in and says this is why I choose an old Vito 08 without mod cons. Uh, I've spent thousands on an engine, drivetrain and show on, so on. I have a drive split on the drive shaft, a drive split on the drive shaft to disable if filming. Always Bluetooth devices too. Awesome. Oh, this is to help stop the tracking. Uh, S. King, what's your opinion on the ID buzz? Ooh. Um, I've seen one on the road. I haven't seen one up close. I've heard good and bad things. Um, I would personally love one. We At one point, my wife and I were looking at a new family car and... The ID Buzz as a family car, like the Caravelle version with six seats and loads of room. I mean, what a cool car. My requirements personally, although we do a lot of about the town type commuting and taking the kids to clubs, we do still have to do that annual trip or twice annually trip over to Europe. So it wouldn't suit our needs in terms of range and probably even space. The long wheelbase ID Buzz looks good. In terms of a company van, maybe one day, maybe one day I'd love to. I know there's people who are, I'm not going to say in a better position than us. There's other companies out there already who are, have picked them up already and converting them, which is awesome. I know there was a conversion at the German caravan show early this year. It was just a very Billy Basic conversion, but it was still one of the first ID Buzz conversions I'd ever seen. 
I think they're cross between, in terms of size, a Caddy Maxi. Oh. They're not huge. They're certainly not T6 size. They're more, they cross between Caddy and T6 size. They're the kind of halfway house. Um, and again, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but in terms of T5s, T6s and T7s, which is the new one, can you, you can't order a T6 from VW anymore. Is that right? I think the only option you have now, if you want to buy a brand new commercial vehicle of that size from VW, you can only order the T7. Is that about right? Um, but no, the T7, I definitely consider ID buzz. I would love to get my hands on one. So if anybody is uh, close to VW in particular um, and would like a genuine camper van conversion review on the ID buzz, ping them my way. I'd love to I'd love to have one for the day and look over it. That'd be fantastic. Um, Carl says, P.S. You helped massively with my conversion to create a fishing van conversion. Oh, that's really nice, Carl. Thank you for letting us know. Do you know what? We've done a lot of fishing vans uh, over the years. Um, luxury fishing bivvies, I guess. Uh, 89 Thunder Chunky says, Electric Classic Cars YouTube channel. I'd love an electronic T2. It's something we considered. And in fact, I have been up close and personal to a classic VW Beetle conversion. And it's bizarre because you've got all this modern circuitry and trickery. But it's still a, you know, a clanky old 50 year old beetle underneath. But I think it's a great idea. And it's something I'm. I've considered for a long time, I've considered electric conversions in camper vans, because when you go out in a camper van, the first thing you do to go when you get to a campsite is plug it in, which in turn could be used to charge your vehicle. You've got leisure electrics on site all the time because the vehicle is just one big battery. So yes, I think there's certainly pros and cons when it comes to an ID buzz, but I'd like to see one up close and personal. personal. Has any, have any of you guys, have any of you driven, seen, looked around an ID buzz yet? Uh, where are we? Carla said, sorry, when I'm filming, I'm out in the middle of nowhere and by being able to stop drive to the rear wheels stops or helps the van from being driven away oh okay oh so you've actually got a cv joint that you disconnect let's go back to your previous comment where are we where are we i can't find your finishing i can't find your previous comment carl where are we carl this is why i choose an old vita 08 without mod cons I spent thousands on the engine, drivetrain, and so on. I have a drivetrain, drive chain, a drive split on the drive shaft to disable it if filming. That's crazy. What a great idea. Um, Stuart says the range isn't too bad. The T6.1 range is awful, 80 to 100 miles. Yes, we have a customer with a T6.1. Who are they modified by? Is it ABT? Abt? Did a T6.1 electric conversion? Yeah, and it was rubbish. And it just got worse and worse and worse. Um, if you don't have a solar setup, this is Motivate. Goggy's come in. And he said, if you don't have a solar setup, could you leave your engine running using it essentially as a generator? I know it's not eco-friendly, but it works. Yes, technically it does. Um, it does technically work as a generator. Um, because your engine turns an alternator. Your alternator has a voltage regulator on it, so it won't ever, or it's designed to not ever overcharge your battery. So your battery will charge at anywhere between 13.2 and maybe 13.9, maybe even 14 volts. If you have a VSR split charge system or better, your one it will sense once your vehicle battery has got to 13.7 volts and then switch that voltage towards your leisure battery and then your leisure jet battery will be constantly charged by the alternator um yeah that's about right so yes technically yes you could leave the engine running um and charge your leisure battery for sure um g says i like the look of the buzz but aside from the limited range i'm not convinced yet that mining for lithium is going to save the planet i'm with g 
I'm with you, G, which is why I don't have an electric car, which is why I haven't built an electric car yet. And Stuart has just chirped in and said, hydrogen fuel cell is the way forward, but the refining fuel is too expensive at the moment. I'm with you, Stuart. I'm definitely waiting for hydrogen or at least another alternative fuel. Um, I used to work in a power industry. I used to um, work in power stations and substations. I know electricity is a big business. Being around that situation, batteries, in the certainly in the size they are, when f cars, early cars, and I'm talking 40s, 50s, 60s, there was lots of cars bursting into flames because they hadn't refined fuel tank design and crash zones and stuff like that. I see electric cars at the moment in very similar. They don't know how to contain an electric fire yet, um, that you just have to let it burn. In fact, a friend of mine visited the workshop. He works for another conversion company that deal in big trucks. And he said, he showed me a video. He says, have you ever seen a lithium ion leisure battery burn? And then he showed me a video. He had been sold a lithium ion battery from a reputable seller. Turns out this reputable seller wasn't so reputable and they were bringing in cheap Chinese lithium batteries, relabeling them and selling them for lots of money because this battery started smoking in the great big motorhome that they just finished. Um, luckily, they were able to tear the lithium ion battery out of the vehicle and just were able to just dump it in the center of this car park. And even the fire brigade, he said, I swear down at one point, the fire brigade were Googling how to put this battery out and that by the end of it they let it burn because from what i understand he said when a lithium ion battery burns or is on fire it actually creates oxygen so no matter what you put on it it creates its own oxygen so it will continue to burn and can't be put out there we go alex is saying thermal runaway um yeah which is incredible he said even if you you can't even douse lithium ion batteries in water because if your lithium ion battery has more than one cell, um, if you were to say dump that battery into water, you'd only short circuit the remaining cells to, yeah, the water will short circuit the remaining cells within that battery and just catch fire anyway and then provide more oxygen. So it's a really, that's the information I could glean from him um, yes, there you go. Alex is saying the cells within the battery ignite neighboring cells. So mind blowing, but the video he showed me that he filmed of this lithium, it was a 200 amp hour lithium battery. So it wasn't a small one. And this thing was just going up. It looked, it was quite scary. So yes, in terms of batteries, if you are buying a lithium iron battery for your camper van, buy branded, buy the best you can afford for sure. Um, but cars with batteries, they're amazing. We've all seen the Ken Block Audi e-tron thing doing its thing. We've all seen the, um, the hill climb and uh, the Nürburgring. All the records have been set now by electric cars, which is remarkable. Um, but everyday cars, who knows? Who knows? That's just my opinion of it, by the way. That's not fact or whatever it is. That is purely my opinion. I am waiting for something else before I drop the dinosaur juice, that's for sure. Oh, we've had some comments in the meantime. <laughs> right. Um, uh, I missed some comments, so my apologies. That was a little bit of a ramble, wasn't it? Papa Goose says, looking to get an inverter for my Pro Ace, such as such an array and prices aren't that different in regards to cost. Is it worth getting the larger ones, even though you may not use it to full capacity? Um, I, I would believe it's always good to future proof because one day you might need that. So if it's the difference between a 2000 and a 3000 watt inverter and the price difference is only like 5%, then yes, go, go for the 3000 watt. Uh, Ems has said, I see no fun with electric cars. I like actually driving a vehicle by changing gears and controlling the vehicle. Hands up if you feel the same. I certainly feel the same, M. Um, it's why all the cars we drive are manual and they're all powered by dinosaurs. That's for sure. Uh, Nick Marshall says, T25 Westie, how difficult is it to rewire the cabin lights from the main battery to the leisure battery system? T how? Uh, uh, not hard. Um, the live for the cabin lights on a T25 
run down the near side A pillar and then feed right into the back of the fuse panel. So all you need to do is feed that live with a fused live from your leisure system and then you'll be able to run um, all of your cabin lights. How's that? I only know that because I've literally just been fixing, fixing cabin lights on Friday for a Type 25 and I was running fresh cables down both A pillars. So yes, there you go. Uh, Royer says, absolutely, modern fuel source is the way forward. Hydrogen is the first step until some very clever people find the next generation. Stu says, we need Dr. Emmett Brown designed for the DeLorean. Yes, we do. In fact, Back to the Future 3 was on TV on Friday and I did enjoy that. Alex says, the cells within the battery ignite neighbouring cells. Yes. Um, Silver Fox says, collecting cars podcast discussed the future of electric the other week. And it was very interesting. Chris Harris from Top Gear. I'm a big Chris Harris fan. I was before he was even on Top Gear. He had a fantastic YouTube channel back in the day. Uh, Taxi Driver says, can you use normal car battery charger to charge a leisure battery? Maybe on trickle charge. Yes, absolutely you can. Carl Fishing says the battery should have electromagnetic seals which break under the fire condition to drop a battery to the floor to allow the vehicle to be moved away from the car. Just an idea. Great idea. <laughs> Motivates is dinosaur juice. Yes. G is giving me the hands up. Motivate manual all the way. M says amen. G says, yeah, but my daily is DSG, like a race car. See, potentially for a daily, if you're in traffic every day, absolutely with the old flappy paddles for sure. Um, James says, oh, M says, not the same though. James says, I agree, electric is not for me. My Golf R DSG with automatic cruise control is automated enough for me. We were discussing that at work the other day. Um, cruise control is one thing, but then, then there's active cruise control. So if you're driving with cruise control and then it senses somebody in front of you slowing down, it will slow you down. If it senses someone moving in your way, it will move you out of the way. Yeah, man. Be a one with the road. I just drove, you know, my Type 25 two and a half thousand miles around Europe. And it was, you know, you couldn't remove the smile from my face. Some of the best times I've had on car drives or big journeys is in a classic car. When you're slow, taking in the scenery, feeling the road, feeling the steering. Yeah, man, I'm all about that. Even the T5, although my the 2K T5 is 19, nearly 20 years old. That's almost a bit too comfortable for me. Saying that, my wife has a BMW and to drive that BMW to Poland is an absolute pleasure. Cruise control on, fits all the family, dog in the back, roof box on. So yes, modern cars definitely have their place in terms of efficiency, comfort and speed. However, if I had an option, I'd be driving a 67 bug down the autobahn all the way to Germany. All the time. Love it. Um, where are we? Uh, S King manual M3 with a dog leg gearbox all the way for me. Russ has come in and said, I don't even like self cancelling indicators. <laughs> um, motivate at S King. What's a dog leg gearbox? Dog leg gearbox. Um, what's the term? I know a type 25 dog leg gearbox is where first is bottom and left. It's a crawler gear and a synchro, but first is bottom and left. Uh, Stu, define a dog leg gearbox on the M3, because I don't know. Uh, Marcus Harris is looking to driving a non-ECU vehicle again. Yeah, amen, brother. Uh, Ems has said, someone we know has a Tesla, and the fun is there, but I'm still not okay with just pressing the brake or accelerator only. But the space, yeah. Um, taxi driver says, could we see some of your adventures abroad? Maybe put onto YouTube. Yes. So my aim in the long term is not just to bring you um, how to content and things like that. We've got some fantastic projects moving forward and I really want to show everybody traveling. Um, I am an extensive traveler and have been throughout my life. Um, I've been to many countries in the world. I was fortunate enough to visit many places in the army. Um, traveled all over, driven all over. Um, my wife and I, we travel all over Europe as well in the camper van. And I've always wanted to document as much as I can. We still do. If you've ever, if you saw our stories and reels and things like that from our summer trip last year, we really enjoy the filming process. Um, so this year, especially Ali, our camera guy is going to be 
editing ain't going to be teaching me more editing so I can film and create more on my own without the need for Ali. Um, so expect some real janky filming and editing moving forward. But obviously with practice comes better, not perfect, with practice comes better. So um, yes, we will be documenting more of our travels. But in the meantime, if you do want to see more traveling and adventure videos, go and have a look at Camper Van Culture. He's done some fantastic travel blogs and videos. Or if you want to see like a real, no, our friends over at, um, gosh, what's the channel name now? Oh my gosh, I can't remember it now. Escape. What's the, okay, I can't think of it now. Oh my gosh, a friend of mine, Ga Gary and Tina, friends of mine, um Dommy, if you can hear me can you research what gary and tina's youtube channel is please because i can't remember it they drive the big red daft truck it's from our youtube channel huh can you please research okay i've got i've got somebody in the back doing some research right now um yes great travel videos gary and tina just escape just hyphen escape there you go i've remembered just escape on youtube big red daft trucks a pair of them and they travel nearly all the way to China. Fantastic, fantastic video series on YouTube. Go and check it out. Wow, that was a real tangent. I've only got three and a half minutes left. Oh my God. Uh, G says, my T2 is fully, fully analog, 100%. Um, Ems has said, adventure vids, 100%. Uh, S, S King, a dog leg gearbox shift pattern has gear, first gear in the lower left from the neutral position. Yes, I was almost right. The Type 25 has lower left first um it's called a dog leg because the pattern to first moves over and down resembling that of a dog yes so the type 25 has a dog leg box first is lower left and i don't know i guess after you've gone from first your range as a sports gearbox you wouldn't go after your initial pull away acceleration race start let's call it that you wouldn't need first again so you'd be banging through two, three, four, and five in the regular H pan. So I'm going to guess why that's more of a sports derived car would have a two, three, four, five in the in the H pan. Again, so if I'm wrong, please, please, please correct me. Um, Nick Marshall says T25 Westie. Occasionally I leave my lights on and drain the main battery. Is there a simple fix in putting a warning buzzer into the circuit? Yes, absolutely. There, hundred percent is. So. Where they sell buzzer kits, all you need to do is find a live and a buzzer. And they sell kits on Amazon and eBay. You need to find a live and the buzzer. And then you just wire the earth into the pin um, for the door control. So when you open your door, your um, telltale, what do they call it? Your interior light switch that will depress or open or close or whatever um and then it will turn the buzzer on so that's right so it will it will think about it lee gosh i've got myself all in a tizzy the live is provided by the live created from your headlight switch so when your headlights are on that will create the live and then when your doors are open that will make the earth which makes which means your buzzer will sound so yes, there are buzzer kits for your vehicle. Fairly simple to wire in. You need the live from the side light circuit, which will provide live to the buzzer. And then you need earth from the interior light switch, which will operate when you open your door. Got there in the end. Uh, <laughs> um, how was that, Nick? I hope that answered your question. Um, 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 Ben, T5 aircon retrofit, worth it or not? Just wind your window down, man. That's what we've been doing for years and years and years. Um, I wouldn't say it's worth it, personally. That's a lot of work to put retro aircon into a T5. Uh, Motivate says, never heard of a dogleg gearbox. Cheers for explaining, learning something new every day. There you go. There deserves your like. Mm. If you haven't pressed the like button, the thumbs up button somewhere around this frame, um if you're able to hit the like button please go and do that now um i would love you for it i love you guys anyway but i'd love you even more if you were to um if you were to do that for me there we go someone just did it for me fantastic 
Um, S King, the original BMW E30 M3s had them, took some getting used to, but great fun. Yeah, so my Type 25 has a five speed box, it's a dog leg box, so I'm very, very used to. I'm doing it with my left hand. Like, yeah, that's right. So I've driven so many left and right hand drive cars. So, yes, a dog leg down and west. Yeah, westbound and down. Westbound and down is first on a dog leg box. Um, Nick Marshall says thanks. Right, and that's it. Jesus. We are at 60 minutes and 24 seconds. Everybody, thank you once again for a super eventful um, hour this evening. It's been good. And what are some topics? Electric cars, security, dog leg boxes, pop tops. What a good evening. Love doing these with you lot. Love doing these. Um, tune in again next Sunday. Um, next Sunday at six, we have the second episode of the T 2K T5 Deep Clean. That's really, really disgusting and very satisfying. So get in and watch that. Um, and then I'm sure we've got some more exciting things coming for you on the socials this week. So, oh, oh yes, that's the other thing. I was trying to think of what the other thing that was cool. So if you've been following our social media, you know the back door bags that we've been um, corresponding with a company in Poland with? They turned up oh, wow. yesterday. So we'll be showing them off very soon, very soon. Okay, right. We're really deep into our hour now. So once again, thank you so much. Thanks for all of the likes. Thanks for all of the comments. You're really keeping this channel alive. Um, I'll see you next weekend, guys. Bye-bye.